if the provinces don't design a system uh, that makes sense for them, they could do tax cuts with the revenues, they could give it back at rebate checks. We are gonna stay, may, we're going to step in, make big polluters pay, and give money back to uh, the people of that province. Well, this is shaping up to be the biggest election fight of the next year, the price on carbon. And the stakes went up this week after a UN report concluded that the world is on the brink of massive climate chaos, unless, they argue, there's a dramatic reduction in carbon emissions. Now, the problem is the government's plan will not even meet their own lower targets, let alone the UN targets. And that's if the provinces play ball, and more and more provinces are not doing that. Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Ontario, PEI, and now possibly New Brunswick have all rejected the Trudeau plan. So can the federal government go it alone? And do the Conservatives or the NDP have a plan of their own? Let's bring in MPs to talk about that and, of course, the legalization of pot on Wednesday. That's another climate change. Marco Mendocino is a Liberal MP for Ontario. He's in Toronto. Also in Toronto, John Brassard is a Conservative MP. Uh, and Alexandre Boulouris is the NDP environment critic. He is in Montreal. Gents, uh, great to have you on the program. I'll start with you, Marco uh, Mendocino. Your government's plan for carbon, admit, by your own admission, will not hit your own reduced targets, let alone the UN's. Does that undermine your government's credibility and the plan that you have put forward on this? Well, let's go back to the beginning, Evan. In 2015, when we um, formed government, we made a promise to Canadians to tackle climate change. And the way that we uh, made good on that promise as a first step was by signing on to COP21. That wasn't just a liberal promise. Conservatives supported COP21 in a motion in the House as well. Now, the way that we extrapolate from that um, COP21 um, signing on to is through a number of different initiatives, one of which is by putting a price on pollution and taking those revenues and then giving them back to Canadians. With but, all of the extreme weather events that are out there, with the floods, with the forest fires, what Andrew Scheer is basically saying is, let's protect the status quo, let's do nothing. That is a failed approach okay, but to hold recipe on. Can you answer failure. the question, though? We're I doing something and we need to right. continue working I, I want to get to the other gents, though, but can you answer the question, though, if you don't mind? Will you even hit your own targets that are lower than the UN? Is your government in place to hit your own targets? Well, look, what's important is that we make progress. And right now we're a little over 700 <laughs> megatons per, per year. And we're going to get to the 2030 targets as close as we possibly can. Take it down to about 520 or so. We, we need okay. to continue to, to work with the industry. And there will be innovations. There will be new jobs that will hopefully help us accelerate that. But doing nothing won't work. That's what the Conservatives okay. want us to, to apparently well, do. Let, and that's let's just find a out. recipe for failure. Uh, now, the Liberals are not going to hit their own targets. John Broussard, your leader was on this program. Andrew Scheer, and he explicitly mm -hmm. told me, I wasn't confusing, he was explicit. He said, my party will have a plan, we will hit those targets that Marco Mendocino was just talking about, but we'll do it with no price on carbon. Is that true? Is your party going to hit these targets? Well, that's, uh, that's exactly uh, what Andrew said, uh, uh, Evan. And, you know, by Marco's answer, obviously they're not going to meet their targets. And what Andrew also said is that we're going to work on a comprehensive plan that is reasonable, that's practicable, that doesn't affect Canadians in a negative way by imposing a carbon tax on them and doesn't disproportionately affect uh, low-income Canadians and, in fact, uh, middle-class Canadians. So what Andrew said is exactly the plan that we're working on, and we're going to roll that out as we get closer to the okay. election. Okay, so I just want to make sure I get this clear. The plan, you're going to hit the targets that even the Liberals might not hit with a carbon price, you're going to ditch the carbon price and still hit those targets. That's, I'm just trying to figure out how you're going to do that. Do you have any idea how you do that? Because that sounds like you're going to have to have some pretty rigorous regulation. Well, there's, there's obviously ways of doing that. And again, uh, you know, I sit on, in on the policy development aspect of, of the next election, and I can tell you that we're working on. And Andrew has made a commitment, Evan, that uh, we are going to uh, uh, have a reduction plan that won't disproportionately affect Canadians in a negative way, low-income Canadians, seniors, middle-class Canadians. And so that's the plan that we're working on, and we'll be able to present it to Canadians and let them judge for themselves as we head to the next election whether it's a plan that works for them and that works for the country as right. well. Right. I, I mean, the yardstick is, does it hit the targets? And that's apparently what Mr. Scheer said. Let me go to the NDP, Alexandre Boulouris. Uh, the Liberals and the Conservatives have a certain target. I don't know if any of them are going to hit it. Uh, the UN's targets are even higher. 
Is the NDP committed to hitting yes. the UN targets? I think we have no choice. I think the, the scientific report from the uh, IPCC from the United Nations, uh, you know, a week ago, should put a sense of urgency in every one of us. The Liberals, their plan is falling apart. The Conservatives, they simply have no, no plan at all. At the NDP, we are saying it's time to have bold actions. So what does that mean, though? Increase the targets and be sure that we meet okay, them. Okay, Liberals, but okay, but the, the answer previously was quite clear. They will not meet the, their, their weak targets that they have right but now. But at least they've got something I can hold them to account for. Uh, how, let me ask you this specifically. Will the, N, are, will the NDP have a price on carbon, impose it on the provinces, and if you want to hit those targets, I guess you're going to have to have a higher price on carbon, a higher carbon tax. Is that the case? We, we totally agree that we need a price on pollution because we cannot do otherwise. Uh, and the, uh, the plan of the Liberal is not strong enough to meet the conservative targets. Let's be clear about that. And uh, it's really strange to hear that the uh, Environment Minister, Mr. Uh, McKenna, last week saying, oh, we all know that we need to do more. But when she was asked by a reporter, but will you change the, the targets? She said, no, we will not. Let me just ask one last question on this, Marco Mendocino. Uh, we, we, this year is an election year, so I'm intrigued by this. Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, PEI, Ontario, uh, New Brunswick, maybe. Uh, they're all backed away from the federal government's plan, okay? So wondering if your plan's in tatters. Is your government committed, if these provinces don't go it alone, you will impose a price on carbon on all those provinces, yes or no? Well, you may recall that uh, a little more than a year and a half ago, we signed the Vancouver Declaration where we got every jurisdiction in the country to sign on to the basic principle that we need to put a price on pollution. All provinces agreed to that. What Minister McKenna has said, I think, uh, very effectively and consistently is that we are looking forward to working with the provinces to put forward a plan. So it's up to them. Now, failing that, we will continue to move forward with putting a price on pollution. That's what Canadians expect. That is backed by evidence. We need to do that. What you hear from the other two opposition parties and in particular the Conservatives is that they have no plan. Andrew Scheer has been promising something now for well over uh, 100, 100 days, certainly months, nothing. That's a defense of the status quo. It's a defense uh, that is based know, on no plan at all. We also know what the Liberals are going to buy a pipeline. That's why, why are you buying Trans Mountain like, with public money? We, all right, uh, let me just on the last thing because pot's about to be legalized and for fear this whole debate goes up in smoke, let me just get John Broussard real quick on this. Uh, we spoke to the Minister Bill Blair before the break. He said the country is ready mm -hmm for recreational <laughs> marijuana to be legalized. You're laughing at it. Did the federal government get it right or not? They are absolutely not ready for this rollout. Uh, you know, if you talk to police officers around the country, my neighbor just came up to me uh, last night, Evan, as a matter of fact. He said he was in a training session in a local police municipality. They came out of that session more confused with their heads spinning than they did going in. I mean, I had a young man in my office this morning before I came here for this interview uh, who spoke to me about online sales. There's nothing to stop that from happening as well. This government is absolutely not ready for marijuana uh, legalization. The country's not not ready. The police forces are not ready. We heard the uh, justice minister last week talk about enforcement of drug impaired driving on a case by case basis. What is that? Last word to you, Mr. Bullerys. Is the government ready? Did the federal government get this rollout right? It happens Wednesday. I know. I think nobody's ready in the country. Uh, you know, we agree in principle with the legalization of, of, of cannabis. We want the government to expunge the criminal files of everybody who had a, a record for a simple position. possession. It's a, a bill from uh, Mary Rankin. But if you look at the provinces, uh, cities, police forces, companies, uh, owners of, uh, of uh, rental apartments, nobody knows what will happen uh, uh, Wednesday. So why, why the rush of the Liberal government? Uh, is it because a lot of Liberals are producing this uh, new uh, public and, uh, and uh, legal cannabis? All right, Alexander Poulouris, uh, John Broussard, and Marco Mancino. Uh, great to have all three of you. Uh, we will find out what happens uh, come Wednesday. Gents, thanks so much.